friends, it's Christy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be making a card using Hello Bluebird's Mushroom House, Fairy Dance, Fairy Garden, and Garden Party. So I've stamped out my images on some Nina Solar White cardstock with Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink. I'm going to be coloring with my Copic markers today, and I'm not going to lie, this one is going to be very coloring intensive. It's going to be pretty much the whole video because we have this absolutely beautiful big background to tackle, plus the additional images that we'll be using to set our scene. So I'm starting with my sky and I'm going to use BG Quadruple Zero first to lay a light wash down on that sky just to put some color down, get that paper wet and saturated and ready for blending. I also like using this super pale blue because I don't have to be so careful around all of the leaves and even a little bit of the flowers. I might have gotten a little bit of color on but it's not going to be a problem because it's so a pale tone. Then I'm going to begin to darken that up with the BG10. I want my sky to be darker at the bottom and then fade light as it gets towards the top. So that's where I'm going to be concentrating all of my color, especially back behind the mushroom house. I wanted that to look really cast in shadow there. So I'm adding just a little bit of color there with the flicking motion so it gets a nice soft blend and kind of tapers off at the top um, so it kind of fades into that BG quadruple zero. Once I have that BG 10 all laid in, I'll go back to my BG quadruple zero and blend out the edge of that and get that nice and faded into the rest of the sky. And then I'll take a look and see if I want to darken things up even further, and I did. So I grabbed my BG11, and I'm going to add a bit of that as well, not nearly as much as the BG10, but I just want there to be a nice gradual shift in that color. So I'm adding a bit of that, and then I'll go back and blend that out with my other two shades as well. I really love these new background images from Hello Bluebird. They're such a great size. They're six by six inches. So you really can change the orientation and get different variations of the scene just by how you cut your cardstock down and where you place the stamp on your panel. So um, I thought that this uh, vertical orientation was going to work best for the images that I'm using today, but you could certainly shift it horizontally if you wanted to. So I'm moving on to the grass and I'm going to use some nice bright greens. I want this to be a really pretty springtime looking scene. So I chose YG11, YG13, and YG17. These greens have a lot of yellow tone into them. So they really do, do look uh, fresh and like that new leaf, new growth uh, kind of green. So I did an all over wash of the YG11, just like I did with my lightest color on the sky. And now I'm gonna come in with my YG13 and begin to darken up little patches here and there, especially where the grasses are and in front of the mushroom house and around the stone pathway, any place that would be cast in shadow and just trying to create like little dips in the yard there, you know, the ground isn't completely flat. So I'm trying to create some play of light across that back background just by loosely holding my marker and kind of swinging it back and forth and getting those little stripes. Once I have the YG13, I'm going to blend that back out with the YG11. And if you watch my channel often, you know that I do prefer to color darkest to lightest. But for some reason when I'm doing these backgrounds, I like to start light and then build towards my darker colors. So now I'm gonna use my darkest shade here, the YG17, really casting a shadow behind that mushroom house and again under all of those little grass patches and those stones and kind of just using that sweeping motion once again. I wanted the edge of the um, 
pathway there to be kind of bordered by some darker green grasses. So I added a bit of shadow there. And then I'll work back down in the reverse using my Y13 and then the Y11 to finish things off. And uh, like I was saying, I just like to build my color on these backgrounds because I'm still new to them. Uh, I haven't been doing them for very long. And it's a lot easier to add color than it is to take it away. But now I'm going to move on to some of my leaves in the background. And you can kind of see how quickly this is starting to get filled in. I mean, it is a good chunk of coloring, but for me, I absolutely love doing stuff like this. So it was so enjoyable. I had an audiobook going and I was just having a good old time. Um, but you can see how quickly you can get things tackled and make it look less intimidating just by blocking in some of the background colors and uh, making it look less white. <laughs> so I'm moving on to my leaves. I kept my YG13 and my YG17, but I added in the G46. And now I have switched to my darkest color first. So I'm using that G46 and blending out with the YG17 and then I'll use the YG13 for my lightest. I'm a lot more confident when it comes to, you know, leaves and things like that that I've been coloring for a long time. So I had no problem just going straight for my darker colors. But, you know, if you ever feel intimidated by color coloring anything, whether it's a background or if you're just new to Copic coloring in general, and you're not sure, you can always try using your lightest colors first and then adding your darker colors and your midtones, just building up and um, that way you might feel a little bit more confident and it's just kind of scary to have a blank white image. But once you get a little bit of color on there, it just, for some reason, it doesn't feel so scary. So. That might be a way to go for you guys. So I'm just continuing. I think these are all the same type of plants for the most part. So I'm going ahead and coloring them in the same color palette. I am going to save a few of the plants that are kind of pushed back in that background that have the longer leaves. I will do those in a different tone. Um, just to kind of break them up because I don't think those are the same plant. The leaves look very different from the ones that I'm coloring now. So we'll switch to a different color for those. But I'm just going to finish up these last few little um, flowers. They almost look like um, strawberry blossoms or something like that. Um, they probably wouldn't be that tall even compared to a mushroom. But whatever they are, they sure are pretty. So for those longer leaves, I decided to go with a more olive toned green. Uh, the olives, they also have a lot of yellow undertone to them. So they match well, but they also have a lot of gray in them. So it just helps them to kind of fade into the background. And um, I just thought that that would be something interesting. I haven't used my olive greens in quite a while. So I thought it would be fun to kind of break them out today. I went with YG93, YG95, and YG97. And just like I did with the other leaves, I'm putting my darkest color toward the base of each leaf and then blending up and getting lighter and lighter as I get toward the tips. So I used the YG97 first and then blended out with the YG95 and finished with the YG93. I forgot about the flowers down in the bottom left corner, so I just went back to my YG67 and then went straight to my YG17 and filled those in. I didn't bother with the lightest shade because I really wanted those to stand out in the foreground against that grass. Now I'm moving on to the pathway and I used E40, E41, and E42 laid in a coat of that E40 first, and now I'm coming in with the E41 and adding a little shading along the edges. I'm being really um, kind of um, organic with the strokes. I want it to look, you know, like a dirt pathway with little stones and stuff in there, so I'm not really 
doing straight lines. I'm purposely stippling my marker and getting some little dots and irregularities. And then I added in some E42, blended back out with the E41, and then went back over the center with the E40 once again. So once that all kind of fades, it'll just have a little bit of texture to it, which will give it that look of the pathway. Next, I'll do the stone pathway, and I wanted that to be brown as well, but a bit darker. So I added in the E44, and I'm gonna use that as my shadowed color. I'm also going to do that over on the rocks on the far left, and then I'll blend those out with the E42, and I'll finish with the E41. So I'm not gonna even use the E40 on those because I wanted them to definitely be a bit darker than that pathway, but I wanted everything to match and just have a really simple color palette today. All right, so I'm ready to tackle the base of my mushroom house, and I wanted it to be kind of a pale beige, but I didn't want to use the same colors as the pathway. So I went with E000 and E00. I'm adding a deeper shadow with that E00 on the left hand side since the house is facing more toward the right, so the light would be hitting it there more. I'm adding some shadow around the door frame and the windows and the shutters, all with that E00. And then I'll come in with the E000 and begin to blend that out. I'm gonna let that fade into the white in the center. Also blending out all of the shadows around the door and the windows. And then I will grab my colorless blender and just kind of smooth that transition area where I wanted it to fade into the white. The colorless blender doesn't actually blend anything, it just pushes color away. So I'm just kind of pushing the beige tones, you know, to back toward the edges and getting a nice fade in the center there. So then I'm gonna move on to my flowers. And I'm starting with R000 and R11. I'm gonna add some all over color with that R000 first. So I'm just coloring in every blossom and every little bud there, all with that same shade. Once I have the base layer with that R000 laid in, I'm going to grab the R11 and start to darken up the edges. Now, normally when I color flowers, I always concentrate the color in the center and then get lighter as I get toward the edges. I wanted to do the opposite today. I wanted to have more of a white or very pale pink center and have the darker color on the outside edges. I was looking at pictures of flowers and I saw some like that and I thought they were so pretty. So I wanted to switch things up today and try something different. So I'm adding that R11 on each of the petals and then on the little bud, I'm just adding a tiny little bit of that to the very top. And then I want to darken that up even further. So I decided to pull in my YR02. So I've jumped to a completely different color family. Instead of the red tones, I'm using the yellow red tones or oranges. Um, but I thought that would just be really pretty to have this combination of like a peach and pink together. So once again, I'm darkening up the edges with that YR02, and I really like how those are starting to come together now. I'm gonna blend that out with the R11, just doing little flicking motions, um, kind of in a clockwise pattern, and um, getting it to just fade as I get toward the centers of those open blossoms. And then for the complete center, I wanted to add a little extra pink, so I grabbed my R20. So once again, I have to do the flowers at the bottom left. This time, since I kind of know what I'm doing already, I just went ahead and started with the YR02, blended out with the R11, 
and then added a little of the R000 all in the center and then colored in the very centers with the R20. Moving on to the door, I wanted to do some warm browns. So I grabbed E53, E55, and E57. I'm going to add some shadow on the inside edges and then also separate each of the individual planks that make up the board. Add a little shadow to the top and bottom with that E57. And then I'm also going to add a few little streaks just by skipping my marker over the surface of that door to create some wood grain texture. Then I'll grab the E55 and start to blend out the edges of that E57 and then fill in the rest of that space with the E53. Then I'm going to move over to the circular window and I'm going back to my E57 for that. I kind of paused for a minute because I wasn't sure if I wanted those windows to be just a plain wood color or if I wanted to do them in a different shade. Also the same with the flower box and all of that, but in the end I decided to keep it more simple since this is a longer video already. Um, and just do that same wood grain texture on everything. I didn't bother to do it on the frame around the windows because it was such a small area. I did add some shading to it, but I didn't add the extra texture. But I did add some to the shutters and that window box. And um, I think it looks really cute and rustic. So I'm glad that I decided to go with the wood color but it would be fun to do those in a whole variety of different colors. Um, you could do it to match the door trim. Um, I left my door trim plain at first because I wasn't sure if I wanted to add another color, but in the end I decided to keep that simple as well. So I just colored it in solid with that E57. So it has a bit of contrast against that door, but it's still very much in the same tone. I added BG10 to the windows, and then I'm going to move on to the little doorknob. I used Y26 and Y28 for that. Then I'm going to do the little chimney, and I wanted that to look metallic, so I chose some cool grays. I picked C1, C3, and C5. So I did a little shadow with that C5 on the bottom part. And then on the top part, I did kind of like um, like an X, as if the other two sides of the X are on the opposite side. I was just trying to create some little um, like reflection there. So it really looks nice and shiny. So now I'm finally ready to do the mushroom cap for the mushroom house, and I'm gonna do some really pretty reds. I chose reds that have a pink undertone to them so they would really go well with those flowers. I chose R22, R24, and R29. So I'm starting with that R29 and laying in some shadow, trying to mimic the shape that the mushroom cap is and just create some nice looking shadows. I left a little rim light on the outside edge, so I didn't bring my color all the way to the edge. That's gonna help it look extra rounded and shiny. Um, so I'll fill that in with my lighter colors. I'm gonna use the R24 now to go over the edge of the R29, really break up the pigment there and get it nice and soft and blended and just kind of work my way toward the center of that mushroom cap where that will be the most highlighted area there. So I knew the mushroom cap was going to be one of the most intimidating parts of this background, but that is why I decided to save it for next to last because by the time I've gotten to there, I've kind of built up my confidence with the rest of the background and you know, I can see that it's looking good, I'm happy with the way it's going, and it just makes me ready to continue. So if you ever have an image that you're just like, I don't know where to even start with this, 
tackle the easy parts first and save the hard part for last because, you know, as that image starts to come together and really look great, it's going to build up your confidence and you're going to feel ready to take on the big stuff. So I just filled in all of the inner space with the R22. I also filled in that outside edge where that rim light is. So you can see how it has that little bit of reflection there. And then I'm gonna go to my W00 and W1 to do the underside of that mushroom cap. Just added a bit of that W1, blend it out with the W00. I'm also going to add those to the white spots on the mushroom cap. I'm starting with my W00 because I wasn't sure exactly where I wanted my shading to go first. Um, so I kind of figured that out with my lighter tone and then went in with the W1 and darkened that up a bit. And then I'll go back to my W00 and blend that out into the white. I did leave that little picket fence completely white. There wasn't much room for shading and it's gonna get covered up in the end uh, design anyway. So now I'm gonna move on to my other images. I'm going to do my fairy's skin first and I'm using E000, E00, and E11. Adding some shading up under their hairline and on their arms and the tops of their legs where their little skirts would be casting a shadow and then blending that out with the E00 and then I'll use the E000 as my lightest. The little arms and legs are super thin so there's not a whole lot of room there but I do think adding this shadow up under the skirts is a, a nice little detail. Then I'm going to grab R20 and add some rosy cheeks and I'll also grab R11 and go over the edges of the R20 to get that to fade into their skin tone. Then I'm going to do their hair and I wanted their hair to be different colors but I wanted to keep it really simple because we've already been coloring for quite some time and I realized that your time is valuable and I appreciate you spending it with me, but I don't want to take too much of it. So I'm going to use the exact same marker colors, but I'm just going to make one slightly darker than the other by adding in one extra shade. So I started with E50, E51, and E53 laid in my color with that E50. So I'm doing it just like I did the backgrounds um, because hair is something I haven't been doing all that long either. So again, I like to start lightest and build up that color. So once I have everything mapped out, I darken it up with the next shade, which was the E51. And then I added a bit more depth with that E53. That's looking good. So I'm gonna move on to my other girl. And again, starting with that E50 and just mapping out the color. And then I'll come in with the E51 and darken things up, doing little flicking motions and just following the direction that the hair is drawn in. So wherever the hair is kind of swept to one side or the other or gathered, that's where I'm going to put those darkest streaks and um, have the lightest parts where it's kind of bumped out and kind of poofy. So um, it just gets a lot of highlights and lowlights and it looks a bit more natural. So right now they're the same color. I'm gonna grab the E55, which is the next shade, and I'm gonna darken up this first little girl's hair just so they look slightly different, just adding very thin little streaks with the very tip of my marker, holding it with light pressure, and then blending those back out with a few extra flicks, and there you go. They have two different hair colors with basically the same marker tones. So now I'm gonna move on to the little girl with the bun. I'm gonna use um, R11, R20, and R22 for her dress. These are all shades that I've already used in this color palette in other images. So it's gonna pull the whole scene together by keeping your color palette unified in that way. I haven't used this exact combination on any one image, but I've used all of these colors 
on different things. So I'm going to also pull the R24 and the R29, which I used on my mushroom cap, but I'm adding in the R39 for my ladybugs. So they match, but they look slightly different. I don't want them to look like a mushroom cap. I want them to be a little bit different. So just adding that one extra tone, whether it's a lighter or darker shade, um, just kind of separates them, but still makes everything super cohesive. I'm going to use BG10 and BG11 for the fairy wings. I'm adding that BG11 closest to their bodies, and then I will grab the BG10 and blend that out. So I'm doing that for my fairies and also for the bee, because I wanted his wings to be kind of transparent looking as well. So I'm letting that fade to white at the edges. And then I'm going to do the other fairy girl's dress and I'm using Y11, Y13, and Y15. And I don't have any yellow in my color palette so far, but I realized I was going to need it for the B. And I didn't want to use it only one place on the card. I wanted everything to be cohesive, like I mentioned. So I wanted everything to show up at least twice. So I thought that would be a good time to tie in the yellow of the B. And I also added a few stripes to that butterfly um, onto the body part. And then for the rest of that butterfly, I decided to go back to some greens because like I said, I didn't want to introduce any new colors at this point. I wanted to use colors that were already in the palette. So I pulled in some more yellow greens. I used YG21, YG23, and YG25. And for the rest of the bee and the ladybugs, I'm going to use C3, C5, and C7. So I use the C7 as my darkest. I also um, filled in the little dots on the one on the far right because they were a little bit smaller than the one on the left, so there wasn't room for two shades. For the other one, I also used the C5. And then I also used the C3 on the B and on the ladybug's faces. I used C1 for the whites of the fairy's collars. And then I'm going to trim these images out with their matching dies. For my sentiment, I'm going to take some Versafine Onyx Black ink and stamp out Fairy Wishes. And this is from Fairy Dance. I'm going to stamp that out a couple of times to make sure I have a nice bold impression because that font is super tiny and thin. So I just wanted to make sure that it really stands out on this card. So I'm going to set that aside and pop my card base in my Misty. I'm going to use a piece of Lawn Fawn Apricot cardstock and I'm stamping in Peachy Keen ink. And I apologize for the way that the light keeps shifting. This video took a lot longer to film than one of my usual ones. And the sun was just coming across my desk. There was nothing I could do about it. I just had to hurry up and try to finish the card for you guys before it, you got totally blinded. I used the Lawn Fawn Outside In Stitch Rectangle Stackables to trim down that panel give it that stitching detail on the outside edges. I also added some foam tape to the back and I'm going to pop that up in the center of my card. So that little bit of peach colored cardstock that shows through just really ties in with those florals. I also trimmed down my sentiment with one of the Lawn Fawn Everyday Sentiment Banners. So now I'm going to begin adding my images. Starting with the fairy in the pink dress with the way that her hand is extended. I thought it looked like she would be welcoming someone into their home. So I had her there by the door. And then the little fairy in the yellow dress is going to be um, coming down to the pathway to greet their visitors. Before I get any further, I wanted to figure out where I wanted that sentiment to go. I decided to add it up above on the mushroom cap because it would really stand out against that red so that sentiment wouldn't get lost. And then I'll have my two ladybugs, which are the visitors that are coming to our little fairy mushroom house. So I have them on the pathway. 
I'll put my little bee up in the flowers so he can be buzzing around collecting nectar. And then the little butterfly is going to go right up on the mushroom cap as well, just overlapping that sentiment banner just a tiny bit and kind of integrating it a little more into the scene. I'm going to finish up my card with a little Stardust Stickles, which is my favorite embellishment. Can't have a fairy card without some sparkle. So I added it to the centers of each of the flowers that have an open blossom. And then I also put it on the wings of the bee and the butterfly. And of course, on my fairy's wings as well. So I'm just squeezing a little bit out and then using the nozzle to spread that around. I want that to be in a thin layer so that it dries quickly and also so it doesn't cover up too much of that coloring. Still want some of that poking through. And I will lift that up to the camera so you can really see how that catches the light and give you another peek at the inside. I really hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you hung in with me to the end, you are amazing. If you did like it, please be sure to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe. Ring that notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. I post new ones every Monday and Friday. If you're interested in any of the products I use, you'll find them listed and linked below the video. And if you'd like to keep watching, here are two extra videos I thought you might also enjoy. You can click on either one of them to check them out. I hope you all have an absolutely amazing day. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.